we're dead still, so I think he's moving away. Go ahead and hit him. Oh, hard. Jeez. I got him, Pete. I got him. All right. Oh, look at him, Pete. Look nice at him, fish. Pete. He's huge. Welcome to Wisconsin's Waters and Woods with your host, John Gillespie. Today's show is being brought to you by your Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. By the Paps Brewing Company. When you want a great taste in beer, just say PB Army ASAP. And by Gander Mountain. Gander Mountain, outfitting sportsmen for generations. Welcome to Wisconsin's Waters and Woods. On today's show, we're back up in the Hayward area, fishing with five-time national musky champ, Pete Maida. Pete, I guess before we get out on the water today, I want to talk a little bit about weather conditions. It's been a terrible summer weather-wise. Has that hurt the fishing up here? Yeah, it's slowed it down a little bit. Uh, the month of June was actually pretty terrible. But uh, actually, July and August have been pretty good. It's just making it a lot tougher to figure out what's going to go on on any given day. Okay, for, I guess for a guy that wants to take up musky fishing, one thing you told me last year is you don't like monofilament line. You like to use the braided line. Is there a reason for that? Well, there's a couple reasons, yeah. Number one, uh, monofilament line stretches. I guess that's the big reason. Dacron line is what I use strictly, and that has very little stretch. The least amount of stretch that you can get in any kind of line. And for musky fishing, it's real important. You know, we've talked about their heads are real bony. It's hard to get a hook into them. The less amount of stretch that you have in your line, the better hook set you're going to get. What about a rod and a reel if a guy wants to buy just one outfit to use for all-purpose musky fishing? Well, if you want to go with just one outfit, I would suggest a seven-foot rod. You got one right action. down here, right? Yeah. Uh, this is what I would say uh, just, just for one outfit. Uh, generally, I'll use this for bucktails and some medium-sized crankbaits. Now, I do suggest a shorter, real heavy rod for big, big baits. Big jerk crank baits. baits and jerk baits, yeah. But just for one outfit to get going, a seven foot heavy action rod like this Quantum here, and uh, I suggest 36 pound Dacron is what I like to use. That heavy? Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't worry about visibility a lot. I fish a lot of clear water, even on bright days. And if I'm gonna have some line, I don't want anything breaking on me. And I, I don't lose fish because of broken line, and I don't lose fish because of stretch. Well, let's go nail a fish, okay? We'll also <laughs> have the winners of the 1992 Pass Blue Ribbon Wisconsin Fishing Contest. All of that coming up right after this. At Pabst, we believe in putting our money into making a big tasting light beer, not a big expensive advertising campaign like Bud Miller or Coors. It's the way we keep our price down, but it creates problems too, because the taste of Pabst Light, the brighter light, is so big, so bold, so crisp, so clean, so refreshing, and so utterly satisfying, it takes a while to get the idea across, and we only have 30 seconds. Quick, the product shot, and the tagline, hold it up, higher, yes, a snore bottle. It's our first new car. Your Toyota dealer invites you to discover the all-new Corolla. After the baby, we needed something a little bigger. More room than ever before with a standard driver's side airbag and available ABS. We needed something we felt we could depend on. Plus, Corolla's reputation for value and reliability that Toyota dealers have been delivering for over 25 years. Afford it? The only hard part was choosing the color. Rediscover value at your Toyota dealer and discover Corolla again. You know, it takes more than luck to consistently catch fish like that one. And that's why I look to Gander Mountain for all my fishing tackle needs. I know that Gander will have all the right gear at all the right prices. And with three convenient locations, I have more time to do the things I really enjoy, like fishing. Serious outdoorsmen like Joe Booker shop at Gander Mountain because they know they're going to find great products at great prices. You should, too. Stop in at our Wilmot, Brookfield, or Appleton, Wisconsin stores. Gander Mountain, where the serious sportsman shops. Desmond sells diamonds. We're Des Smith. When you're ready for a diamond, come to us. Why? We sell for less. How? For over 50 years, my family sold to jewelers. Now we're selling direct to you. So why pay more? For the best deal in diamonds, we're Desmond's. Pete, you know something I hear from uh, guys that have tried muskie fishing, that it takes 10,000 casts to catch a muskie. Do you believe that? <laughs> well, no. No, that's a little severe. I guess, uh, if you're not doing the right things, that, that may be true, but I think it boils down to eh, more about 900 or so, I'd say, on the average. Now, what kind of water are you going to start us out fishing in? Now, you like rock bars, you like weeds. What are we going to start out on today? 
Well, we're going to do a little bit of both here. We're going to start out on weeds. Uh, previous to this last cold front, the fish were right up in the thick weeds, right up on top. Now, the last couple days, we've been right on the edge. That's all the fish we've been picking up have been hanging right on the edge of the weeds. So that's basically what we're going to concentrate on to start with. That's where the graph really comes into play uh, to keep me right where I want to be and keep the baits where they should be. We will try back up in the weeds now. It's supposed to warm up today. So that might move the fish right back up into the weeds. And we're also going to try a couple of medium depth rock bars out here. We've been moving some fish on. We were on the water for less than an hour when Pete hooked and landed a 38 incher. Unfortunately, our camera malfunctioned. But Pete came through again, and less than 45 minutes later, he hooked into another muskie. We finally got the camera working after Pete subdued the fish. By the way, the camera worked just fine throughout the remainder of our trip. Generally, yeah. prefer not to bring them in the boat. We'll try and. Uh, you get a measurement in the water. It's nice to have one of these uh, four-foot sticks. Whenever you measure them in the water, you also want to disengage your spool in case he takes off on you. Right. And uh, most of the time, bring them out a little bit so we can get a shot of them there. You can Pete. get a yeah. hold of a fish right there. Now he's kind of at the upper limit, Whoa. <laughs> where you can grab him over the back. See, this is about a 39-inch fish, and for me, I guess for everybody, it's a little different. But for me, it's hard to grab anything. This size are much bigger over the back. Now you figure he's 38, 39, huh? Yeah. And he is. Got to get his tail up here. Oh, 38. 38. Jeez. Oh, that was super. Now we caught that fish. Uh, we're fishing off the edge of a weed bed. That, is that, it? that fish was also right on the edge. Okay. Uh, about the weeds in this particular area breaking about. I got to take these off, John. I can't see. They break in about uh, eight feet of water, and this fish was in about. 9-10 is where I actually hooked them. Just about. Now let's hold them up and... Yeah, he's a beauty. nice fish. That is a real nice monkey. Got a few teeth, huh? Yeah, yeah they do, don't they? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Well, let's Pretty let them fish. go, huh? Yeah, let's do that. He's okay? He's fine. Yeah, but you see that discoloration? Yeah, that's a shame. Now, will that heal itself? Oh, he'll time? be fine. It's just that uh, I don't really know for sure how much that affects him. Well, yeah. hey, congratulations. <laughs> Number two of the day. All yeah, right. Let's get another one. Here, get him up. All right. All right. Hey, hey Musky. Is it, is it running there? Holy cow. There hey, it is. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's decent. Uh, 33. 33 you got yeah. on that one, huh? Yeah. Now, once again, Pete, I think it's important to point out to the folks, uh, you don't like to really bring those fish into the boat because you remove that protective mucus covering, huh? Slime removal, I don't like to bring these fish in the boat at all uh, if I can avoid it. Fish like this, there's, there's just no need at all to even bring it in. Oh, that's fun to watch him take Oh, there he goes. Good release. Guess, yeah. Good release. Good job. All now, right. we're fishing a little bit deeper water here, aren't we? Again, that fish was right on the weed edge. On the weed uh, edge. About, about nine, ten feet. That's where the other two fish have been. And we haven't seen a lot of fish today. We already discussed that. But everything we've seen has been on that edge, and it's hit. Hey, look at that monkey, buddy. <laughs> I got one. I got one, too. You're kidding. I got one, too. Well, which one do we film? Uh, I don't know. We got two of <laughs> them at the same time. Wow. Holy mackerel. Whoa. It's time now to announce this week's winners of the 1992 Paps Blue Ribbon Wisconsin Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is Mary Randuens, who boated this trophy 28 and a quarter inch walleye on Laris Lake. Mary was using a jig and a minnow. Dave Hudzinski of Milwaukee moved into the winner's circle this week with this 20 inch five pound bass. Dave took this beauty out of plastic worm. Dennis Pugasek of Burlington boated this 20 inch five pound 13 ounce largemouth bass on Lake Geneva. Dennis was using a white spinner bait. Chad Elliter of Pewaukee caught this huge one pound seven ounce bluegill on Phantom Lake. Chad was using a medium shiner. And Randy Fulfer of Milwaukee rounds out this week's winners. Randy tied into this 22 and a quarter inch largemouth bass on Pewaukee Lake. Randy was using a Kelly worm. All of the winners will receive a custom designed show t-shirt and a case of Paps Blue Ribbon. And they'll be eligible for $5,000 in prize money. Remember, any fish caught in Wisconsin in 1992 is eligible. Just look for this poster and pick up an entry blank or send your photo to Wisconsin's Waters and Woods, 5628 North Lydell, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53217. Remember, PAPS promotes catch and release and keeping our waters safe and clean. So when you're out in the boat, enjoy the great taste of PAPS Dene. Or when you're having that shore lunch, reach for a PAPS Blue Ribbon, as they say.
PD Army ASAP. Mm -hmm. If you've discovered there's more to focus on in life than a standard driver's side airbag, discover all the safety features available in the all new 1993 Toyota Corolla. And discover Corolla again. Desmond sells diamonds. We're Des Smith. When you're ready for a diamond, come to us. Why? We sell for less. How? For over 50 years, my family sold to jewelers. Now we're selling direct to you. So why pay more? For the best deal in diamonds, we're Desmond's. When I want the very best in fine dining, I visit Kyoto's Japanese Steakhouse on Okachi Lake. Kyoto's features the finest hibachi-style cuisine and sushi. See expert chef Yukio Kamada prepare everything from chicken and steak to shrimp and lobster. Or enjoy one or more of Kyoto's exciting sushi presentations. And Fridays, come on in and enjoy Kyoto's new grilled fish fry. How's everything? Steak is excellent. Good. How's your fish tonight? So we invite you to come down to Kyoto's on Okachi Lake. A place to dine, a place to dance, a place to have fun. For reservations, call 569-1433. There you go. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Well, Pete, we're out here for day two of our musky adventure up in Hayward, and uh, the skies dawned uh, cloudy and rainy, but uh, you like these conditions, huh? Yeah, I kind of like this stuff. Uh, as long as we don't have the thunder and lightning, I'm pretty happy out here. I noticed you got your sunglasses on on a cloudy day. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess a lot of people just assume the only reason to wear these things is on a, on a bright day. That's the only time it helps you see in the water, but that's really untrue. I'll keep my... Uh, polarized glasses on until it's just about dark in the evening. Uh, and you'll find, you can just test it by looking at the lure coming into the boat, that, you know, glasses on, glasses off, and until you get to extremely low light conditions, you can see down in the water better with these polarized glasses on. Well, uh, you know something? I think only musky fishermen are crazy enough to be out here all day on a day like today, you know that? <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> musky fishermen got all be a little bit simple to like this game in the first place, I think. <laughs> well, let's get one, okay, buddy? All right. Wow! <laughs> what do you got there, Pete? Got what do you me, got, buddy? Got myself a big walleye on oh, the old walleye, grandma bait. Grandma bait. Look at that baby. <laughs> Holy cow! That's a big walleye, man. Yeah, it is. What is that, about five, six pounds? <laughs> that's about a five pounder. <laughs> now what are we fishing? What type of water is this we're fishing out here? <laughs> <laughs> we're catching walleyes all of a sudden. I don't know. We're looking for muskies. We're catching walleye. He That's was amazing. Uh, he wow. was down about 12 feet of water. In a weed area? Uh, yeah, right on the edge of the weeds here, right where we've been getting the muskies. Holy cow. So, <laughs> is that a nice looking walleye? Hit a nine inch bait. He's hungry. You know, last time we were on this lake, I had a big walleye up too on, yeah, a, on, that's a, right. on a musky yeah. bait. Yeah, that came in on a suig, didn't it? Yeah. I can't wait to hold that baby up. Boy, that's mean for yeah, walleyes. Now, Pete, is that common that you'll occasionally get a walleye like that on a musky bait? Uh, yeah, it happens every every year a few times, you know. Yeah, see if we can hold him up. Yeah, I got to get him. What do you figure he goes about? Well, God, I don't know. I have to put him on a ruler. Four and a half pounds, maybe five? Yeah, he's chunky, isn't he? Yeah. That's great. Pete the musky guy turning into Pete the walleye guy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I saw him shaking around down there. He got 26 inches. Yeah. <laughs> now, will you occasionally keep a walleye to eat or? Not one like this, but uh, I'll keep the small walleyes. I like to keep, you know, 15 inches or so. This female here, we let her go back in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that broke our luckless streak today. Yeah, that's a little wrong species, but what the heck. <laughs> Pete, you got a follow? Well, I just busted through a weed with this big grandma bait here, and then I had a nice flash. Looked like a nice fish. He was moving fast. Thought maybe he'd hit this figure eight, but... You want to know something about figure eights, and we talked about it the last time we were together, but we didn't talk about this. A lot of guys when they figure eight will do one figure eight after a follow and just give up. You just keep it down there for a long time, huh? Yeah, I've had them come back after 10 times around or so. I've I've gone around here at least 15, 20 times now. But uh, yeah, just because the fish disappears doesn't mean that they're gone. They can be down there still watching. They can come back out from underneath the boat in a real hurry. 
So Especially just, when you see a fish that looks active like that one, you want to keep going. You know, a fish that's moving fast is generally an active fish. So to summarize, keep it down there, put a weight down, and just keep it yeah, moving. Yeah, keep it huh? moving. Yeah, you never know. A lot of times they'll come back on it. Just don't assume they're gone when they disappear. Look at, I kind of got them wrapped around. Whoa! <laughs> Watch out, you're gonna get wet. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> well, now we got a walleye in the northern. Where's our muskie today, buddy? We got to get. Oh, we had one yet. follow. Whoa! Look at him dance. There he goes. <laughs> wow, he just. You know, what, John, if you don't mind, I might keep that one to eat there. Sure, that'd be great. You better take him off though. You got the yeah, pliers back there. Probably a good idea. Must What's be that bait mate, huh? Yeah, spray that on there, huh? Hold him up, though. What is that? About five pounds, six pounds? Yeah. Well, we're getting some action, Pete. Yeah, they're starting to move. You know, we just had that follow, and I think maybe something's getting them clicking here finally. You hooked him quite well, John. You felt the set, right? Yep. Yeah, I felt the bolt move when you set the hook. That's the way it should be. Hey, oh, yeah, hey. Peter, all right. Musky. Look at that musky, buddy. <laughs> I got one too. You're kidding. I got one too. Well, which one do we film? Uh, I don't know. We got two of them at the same time. Wow. Holy mackerel. Whoa, wow. We got two of them at the same time. A double header must what be done. All right. All right. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I think they started to hit. I think they started to let's get, let's get some film of pizza over here. Is he still on there? <laughs> I've been kind of playing him light. Two at a time. Mine's a legal fish, but yeah, it's it only is. about 35. You 34. got a 35. I got a 34. <laughs> wow, this is, let's get them both over the same side over here, huh? <laughs> Twin dudes. Twin dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Two muskies at the same time. Oh, well, mine's a little bigger than I thought. Hey, Pete, has this ever happened to you before? Yes, <laughs> but only three times. Holy cow. <laughs> Two hey, guys. at the same time. How you doing? All right. <laughs> hey, is that camera moving, pal? Oh, yeah. This is incredible. It never happened to me before. You know, I, you, yours hit. I turned to look at you, and then all of a sudden, wham, that thing. <laughs> well, well, how do we remove two at a time? I don't know. So, Pete, that fish, the one that I caught there, is kind of hooked in the gill, so this might be a good time to show us how to snip those hooks so they'll dissolve in the fish's mouth. It, rather than jerking on a critical area like the gills there, we'll actually cut these off. And this one is really buried. Yeah, you know, I think the one that you have hooked, uh, Pete, on your rod, too, is the same situation. Really? Yes. Isn't that incredible, Pete? Two at a time, <laughs> doubleheader muskies. That doesn't happen often, I'll tell you that. Well, that kind of shows that uh, fish will frequent the same spots. Oh, exactly. At the exactly. same time. So you just actually just cut that hook off and you'll yeah. let it go with the hook in yeah, there. Yeah, we should go over these bolt cutters are a great thing. Cost about 10 bucks. Set of little bolt cutters. And uh, we can actually pull that little piece of hook out. He doesn't have anything left in him now. Well, hold him up for me. That's my muskie, huh? Yeah. And he's what, about 35? We'll get you an official measurement here. Okay. And yeah, he's 34 and a half. I was pretty close, huh? Nice guess. Let's put him right back in. Now we'll work on victim two. Part two of our double header here. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, he's a little bit longer. Now he's got the same situation or not? Uh, no, nah, it's really not necessary to cut either one of those hooks. Two muskies <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> when you hollered, I got one. I thought, what is going on? All right, now that one, they're chunky too. Yeah, yeah, we'll throw them on there quick. It's not gonna hurt them. He is, he got this garbage, huh, he's almost 37, just a hair shy. All right. But, well, Pete, the third time it's happened in all of your musky days, huh? <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? Uh, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> That's great. I guess we got to give each other five now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, what are we going to do? Yeah, I have to get, get over, over here. here. <laughs> Dude, good that's job. Two at a time. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Pete, now that we've had a chance to calm down a little bit, why don't you describe for the folks what type of area we were fishing there when we caught those two at a time? Yeah. Uh, one thing you always want to look for when, when learning the lake is these points, because a lot of times any sharp points on the shoreline, there'll be structure coming out from that area. And that's exactly what we've got over here. We've got shoreline weeds, but we've got a real sharp peninsula bar that sticks out there. And it sticks out about eh, 50 yards or so. We set up right on the tip of that bar and we were coming down the edge. Hold on, hit it. He's oh yeah, high. he's still there. 
He took a swipe at it. <laughs> Is he still there, Pete? No, I don't see him. He, he took a bump at it, and I, I set the hook and didn't hook him. You know, he, one thing we should point out to the folks, while well, in the last hour all this action we've had, we fished a good solid five hours without any action, didn't we? Yeah, we fished five hours with only one follow-up from a muskie. Yeah. So, yeah, so, and all of a sudden now we had that uh, double catch, and I just had one hit on the figure eight here, so. So that means that be patient, folks. That's Stay right. Stay on the water. This is muskie fishing. But when they start, sometimes uh, you can move a lot of them in a short period of time. There is some excellent musky fishing available this fall in the Hayward area, and Pete does have a few open dates remaining. For more information, give Pete Mena a call at 715-462-3952. It's our first new car. Your Toyota dealer invites you to discover the all-new Corolla. After the baby, we needed something a little bigger. More room than ever before with a standard driver's side airbag and available ABS. We needed something we felt we could depend on. Plus, Corolla's reputation for value and reliability that Toyota dealers have been delivering for over 25 years. Afford it? The only hard part was choosing the color. Rediscover value at your Toyota dealer and discover Corolla again. One sip of the fresh, clear, bold taste of cold-filtered Paps Genuine Draft and you'll think of the great outdoors. Cool mountain streams, aged hops, and all of the ingredients that make Pabst one of America's favorite genuine drafts. Of course, this is no coincidence. We planned it this way. Pabst Genuine Draft, the great taste that never fades. You know, it takes more than luck to consistently catch fish like that one. And that's why I look to Gander Mountain for all my fishing tackle needs. I know that Gander will have all the right gear at all the right prices. And with three convenient locations, I have more time to do the things I really enjoy, like fishing. Serious outdoorsmen like Joe Booker shop at Gander Mountain because they know they're going to find great products at great prices. You should, too. Stop in at our Wilmot, Brookfield, or Appleton, Wisconsin stores. Gander Mountain, where the serious sportsman shops. Play to win. Don't be a loser. Learn the basics of all the popular casino games. Learn the basics of how to play and win. Eliminate your first-time player's embarrassment. Let America's foremost gambling authority, Jimmy the Scott Jordan, show you how to play all of these games with confidence. Craps, roulette, blackjack, baccarat, poker, kino, sports betting, and slot machines. A total of 12 games. Here's how to order. Call 800-522-2107. The tape is just $12.99 plus $3 shipping and handling. Call now. The bow hunting season opens up around the state of Wisconsin next Saturday, and the outlook again this year is excellent. The state deer herd is in superb shape, especially in southeastern Wisconsin. We're here with Doug Hoskins, the game warden, or the district game warden for southeastern Wisconsin, and, and deer hunting season is upon us already as far as archery is concerned. And Doug, it opens up the 19th, and I guess you guys are really excited about the number of deer we have in the state. Uh, we are excited about the number of deer. We're excited about the opportunities that hunters are going to have this year, and uh, we always get excited this time of the year just like the hunters do. What about southeastern Wisconsin? Do we have a large number of deer in this area? We have a very high deer population, as evidenced by the number of car kills that we're having this year. Uh, we've tried to open up areas that weren't open before. We've expanded the areas. We've, we're offering extra tags in certain areas. Uh, I do want to caution people to check with the local authorities in terms of ordinances to make sure they don't run afoul of any local laws in terms of a bow and arrow or a gun. Now, how does a hunter find a, a public ground to hunt on in southeastern Wisconsin? Well, we do have public hunting ground maps at the DNR office in Milwaukee, and if people would call there, we'd be happy to mail it to them. <clears throat> in terms of private land, it's just a matter of uh, asking permission, doing some scouting and so forth, and getting permission to be on private property in this area. Now, as far as tree stands are concerned, I know there's rules that vary there as far as public and private land. How does that go? Right. On private land, as long as you have the permission of the landowner, you can do pretty much what you want with a tree stand. You can even cut limbs off trees and nail the tree stand into the tree. But again, you've got to have permission of that landowner. On state land and public land, uh, you can put a tree stand up. However, it can't damage the tree at all, and it must come down at the close of hunting hours every night. Any regulations uh, involved in the safety of the tree stands? Uh, we don't regulate height or anything, but we certainly want to caution people not to go too high. And there have been a couple of serious accidents in the past couple of years with people falling out of tree stands. Now, I think one, two, one thing, too, that we have to look at is uh, the deer tags. Are there multiple tags, or how is it working this year? Some of the units have multiple tags, not all. And again, I would encourage people to stop down or call us, and we'll send them a, a map that shows the units where they can take more than one deer. 
Okay, hunting hours. Uh, as far as hunting hours are concerned, is there any changes this year, Doug? There was a change made a couple of years ago in that we allowed the bow hunters to hunt 15 minutes longer than they normally were able to, which they really like because that's a good time of the day the deer are moving and so forth. However, uh, once that 15 minute period is up or once the hours are closed, the bow must be put in a case immediately, which is a change from a couple of years ago. Now these guys should follow all these rules because you guys are out there all the time, we'll be aren't out you? There. We'll be out there and uh, I think uh, the majority of the hunters are certainly ethical, legal hunters and that's what we like to see. Well, that is our show for today. Please join me next week as we head out on Lake Michigan in search of Chinook salmon. And we'll also take a look at some new innovations that are out just in time for the upcoming deer season. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying Wisconsin's waters and woods. Today's show has been brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company. When you want a great taste in beers, say PB Army ASAP. Buy your Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by Gander Mountain. Gander Mountain, outfitting sportsmen for generations.